Welcome to Not Factory Approved, take three. I filmed this intro a couple months ago, and then when I went to find it, I couldn't find it. So, apparently somebody didn't download it, or complete it, or something, or didn't push the right buttons, but I don't have it. So, here we go, take three. Not being a mechanical engineer, I have trouble sometimes measuring and getting angles and so on. My thinking is, that if I put this one, the female end, and this one with the male end, I should be able to put the receiver piece as a bolt on, and then if I ever have to remove this, I can. But now I'm trying to get the settings right for these hinges. Now I'm thinking that if it sticks up this way, a 32nd of an inch, or even a few thousandths, that will help it to clear as it swings up and then this side would be flush so I'm going to tack it try and get it in the right position tack it and see how that works that's what I'm attempting to make is a sheet metal brake and this one is roughly four feet long I think it's 52 inches end to end of course I'll lose some here with the hinges but I'm using 3 inch square tube, which I bought. This is all scrap that I purchased. This is pallet racking, these aqua ones. So I've taken these pieces off and I'm using them. So I've made the ends opposite gender so that it would be easier to take apart if I ever have to. I'll put zerk fittings in each of these ends, there and there, and that way we can, I can uh, grease it if I have to, without having to take it apart. So I think what I will do is weld this piece onto here, after I straighten it, and get rid of these pieces here, and then this one and a half inch bar, with a light grinding on the edges, will fit perfectly in this groove. And then I can adjust, I'll weld it onto here, and then I can adjust it for height, angle, as well as um, distance for clearance here. And part of why I use the square tubing, other than the fact that it's nice and strong, is that it has a softer radius than this part does. I've ground this with an angle grinder, smooth and straight. And that gives a nice sharp radius here. If I want a softer radius, then hopefully I just put the metal in and I have this bar up and pull it down to the same effect. So that's the thinking. I have these bolts with springs and washers, and that raises the bar when I want to take the metal out and then tighten it down with a box end wrench. And that should work there. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, ignore the welding for now. I'll be cleaning that all up. I had a lot of trouble lining this up for where I was trying to get it. In the future, I think I would just make it flush both sides. So that there's no... I tried to get a little bit uh, of a profile here for distance between this and the edge. I think I might just grind these out and make them perfectly flush and then count on the bar that will be in here to adjust it. That seems a simpler way to go. Hope you enjoy. See what else I have to change in the design. I finally gave up fighting. So I bought larger magnets yesterday. Those hold quite well. So I'm going to cut this out and put it flush both sides. And then I will adjust with the brackets that come out and hold it when I make them. Now I'm making sure everything is lined up. I've got the sliding adjusters here and it's notched incorrectly because I um, failed to take into account that this is at the top. I was trying to put it down below which of course would make this down too far. So I'm trying to make everything exactly lined up perpendicular etc. 
So this lines up like that to the edge. It's as high as it can go. I've got it clamped so that it's perpendicular, not sloped in any way. I've got the slider bolted there and there. I'm going to put three in eventually. So that part should work. I've done the same thing over here. Two bolts up against the slider. This piece hitting against the notch. So that, in theory, that works. Now I'll take it down on the ground and try and weld this underneath. And then I can take everything out afterwards or I can at least slide it forward to start with and then tack this and then take everything out and finish up uh, with things I have to do. The front here, I need a shorter bolt. That's what this one is here for. I will be shortening these so that I keep it consistent. And there's a bit of a gap here I have to work with yet to try and make sure that that doesn't interfere on to the next. What I often find is that things aren't obvious until they're obvious when I actually put them together. This hinge here, both ends actually, is off, it's not centered on the edge of the, the bending portion. So when it turns, it actually starts off with a wide distance and it gets tighter. Uh, that's not going to work. So, several things I could do. I could either cut all this down and then use these brackets to adjust it further in and have it work that way. The fulcrum actually has to be centered on this edge for it to work. That's one way to do it. Another way, which is not nearly as good, but I might just do, is to grind this down so it's rounded. And then I have some half inch angle iron, which I would put on the inside and weld it about every inch, or sorry, every four inches for about an inch to strengthen it. To do anything else, I'm going to have to cut these out. I have to finish filling these yet. I'd have to cut these out and move them out so that the fulcrum center was at this edge. Ah, it seems like I should have noticed that. But now it's obvious. Here's the primered sheet metal brake. So I dug these out, dug out all the um, scale that was in there, blown it out. See if I can fill those holes. Not stellar welding, let's say that. Same thing on this end, although not nearly as bad. I'll fill those and then uh, I'll try and make some kind of tube to put underneath here so that I can stick the handles in. And when I was clearing flammables, I still got a few things to go obviously. I noticed there are two cans of gas right down here. So I thought, why not? I'll move them. What could go wrong? There it is. Fortunately, I ran out of paint, so I'll have to get some more, I guess. I thought I had another couple cans of that stuff, but there you go. So I've bolted it to the bench top just for trial. I don't want to make a stand for this unless I absolutely have to. I do have to grind underneath here the welding because as I uh, use it, it's going to put dents in the countertop. I don't really want that. And it would be make it easier to uh, put a mounting bracket there if I have to make a stand as well. So there it is. I've got the, these pipe here, each end. And my thinking is I'll stick a three-quarter inch pipe in here, bolt it to clamp it, and then I can use that to bend with. 
and I can also flip it around if I want to. But that's where it's at at this point. So I will give it a shot and see how it works. I didn't do the angle iron in here, as I talked about previously. I'm going to try it first, see how it works with that gap that is there. Because there, there's no gap. And there we have about an eighth of an inch. So I'll see how that goes. Here we go again. More correction of failed workmanship. This edge here, I thought I had it lined up. But if you can see, it's slightly back. We use a straight edge here. See it's sitting back. That affects the placement of this bar. So I have to cut this, move it forward an eighth of an inch, and make sure everything's even. And then this bar will be in line perfectly with the bending bar that comes up. So that's what I have to do. I do have these bolts and nuts, or the holes and the nuts in the right position. They're both even, one end to the other. So I will cut this, move it forward, re-weld it, grind it all smooth, or fill it. I probably have to fill this a bit. But we shall see. Might just be a case of grinding that off. I'll know better once I get the final measure. Sometimes it helps to go through a regular mind change. So I changed my mind. Instead of cutting this piece off and moving it, I cut the nut out, which was labor intensive, but I cut it out and now I cut the nut out and now I've moved it forward an eighth of an inch, lined everything up for this edge, both sides down there as well, make sure it's even, and tighten this up as well as the other end. And now I will tack that nut in place and that should take care of it. Just ground off the nubs that were there from arc welding, so that will now sit flat on the bench without putting any dents in it. So it should be ready to go. I've tacked the nut. Unfortunately, I could only do it on one side because of the depth of this. I started to weld it, and then I realized I was actually welding away from the nut, and then I couldn't get back in there afterwards without touching the sides or not getting a proper arc, and then having the rod attached to the surface. So. It's not, uh, it doesn't have to be bolted up real tight, so it should be okay. I ground off the nubs underneath, so there it sits flat on the bench. It's bolted through with the wing nut and washers underneath. This is now adjustable for distance in and out by quite a bit, a quarter of an inch or so, which is more than enough. This is adjustable about a sixteenth of an inch. If I really have to get a sharp bend, then I, I will have to do it in two stages. Where I bend it, and then move this piece out, and then bend it again. Now that will work. If this 3 inch angle iron is not strong enough, and it does end up arcing in the middle, then I will add the piece that many people do, which is a, an adjustable bolt thread here and then um, solid rod connected side to side and that will certainly brace it. I don't really have any big pieces of metal to, that I can afford to demonstrate with so I'll use this little bit of scrap which is obviously very light stainless but it's not that much strength to it. I'll try that until I get the pipe, I'll just use these. Just clamp it down. One bar. on these. Okay, so there's a nice smooth bend. 
radius is a bit wide, so I might have to do something about that. I think I should, sometimes I'm going to need it sharper than that. But, has potential. One sheet metal break. As described previously, I put these handles in to just three quarter inch pipe, about a five foot length, cut a two foot lengths out of it, clamping bolt there just to hold it, and then you pull it up. I've made them at two feet, I think that's long enough, and then they can come out when I have to store the brake. I have to paint this yet, but that just moves the gauge for the angle. There, there's 90. Looks like 90. I used some red paint, if you can see it. Just sprayed this and then wiped the paint off. So it left the coloring in the markings. 90 degrees here. 90 degrees there. It's an overblown protractor, but it cost me 10 bucks and it saved me making one. So then I just used create studs, cut them down so that clamps this hinge and then these clamp the compass or the sorry the protractor.